Um, if you don't want that, the way around it is to use a do while loop. And the way that that works is instead of starting your loop with while condition or a for kind of uh, statement, uh, you start with do. And that's all you have to type, no condition. And it'll execute this code. And then at the bottom, you put while and then your condition. And then a semicolon. So the way this works is instead of checking a condition before it runs this code, it goes ahead and goes ahead and runs it and then checks the condition. And then if the condition is false, it doesn't run it again. If the condition is true, it does run it again and checks the condition again. So that's the way that works. So this time, if we compile and run, we go ahead and we do get one line of output, even though counter is greater than 20. And the reason for that is because it doesn't check the condition before running the code. So it depends on your situation which one you'd like to use. I'll show you one more example using a do while loop, which is in our rock, paper, scissors game that we uh, made last time. Oops, I did not mean to open Xcode. Oh, jeez. Okay, text edit. Very nice. So if you watched that last video, you noticed that um, if the user entered an integer other than 1, 2, or 3, we just said invalid choice and ended the program right there. Um, a different way of handling that is to maybe force the user to enter 1, 2, or 3 and not exit the program if they enter something else. Uh, this may be what you want, maybe what you don't want. I've already written out um, a do while loop right here, but I'll go ahead and write it out again because I think it helps to show um, the way this works. So first we think about this, do we want a do while loop or a while loop? Well, I think we definitely want a do while loop, and that's because we want it to give this menu at least one time. Obviously, um, uh, user choice isn't even going to be declared until we get this input. So um, we're not going to have to worry about it uh, having some initial value that doesn't uh, agree with our condition. But because we're declaring user choice inside the loop, um, it's best to use a do while loop. And especially because we definitely want it to display the menu at least once. So let's set up our block. And then for our condition, I'm going to make that user choice is greater than or equal to 1 and user choice is less than or equal to 3. So this is going to um, go through this, this code, declare user choice, and then see in into user choice. And then if user choice is uh, between 1 and 3, then it'll finish. It won't execute the block again, and it'll just continue. If user choice is not between 1 or 3, so if it's like something like 10 or 7 or anything outside of that range, it'll say, too bad, so sad, go back to the top and execute this again. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Oops. Oh, for this uh, for this condition, because of the scope, like we were talking about in the other video, it needs uh, this user choice variable to be declared outside of the loop. So that way it'll uh, initialize that value, even though it won't set it to anything. But um, right now it's giving us that error because when it comes down here and uh, checks this user choice, that's outside of this block. So user choice is outside of the scope of this block, meaning it's not part of this main block, even though it sort of is, but it's local to this block, so it can't be accessed outside of the block. So by declaring it outside of the loop, then we're making it local to this block, and then it can be accessed uh, outside of this block with that made any sense. Let's go ahead and compile, no errors. So this gives us a shot. Obviously like before we can enter, you know, I pick rock. Oops, apparently we can't. Let's see, what went wrong? Oh, I know, I did this wrong. Uh, we only want this loop to happen when this condition is false, right? Because if this condition is uh, if it is between 1 or 3, we don't want it to do the loop, we want it to finish. So I forgot one 
very big thing, which is this not operator in front of this entire condition. So this loop should only happen when user choice is not between 1 and 3. Sorry, that can be a little bit uh, confusing if you don't think about it carefully. So now, if we go ahead and try rock, there we go. I picked rock. Computer happened to pick rock. It's a tie. Thanks for playing. Great. Let's try it again. And this time, you know, I'm a rebel. I'm going to put 13 because I, I think I can crash the program and it's going to be so funny. Oh no. It's seen through my uh, my uh, deceit here. And uh, it's realized that by entering 13, that's an invalid choice. And it goes ahead and just displays the menu again. It's like, you know what you did wrong. You have to enter a proper integer. So if we enter 16, nope, 200, nope, but if we enter 3, bam, you pick scissors, computer happened to pick scissors, it's a tie. So um, by using this do while uh, kind of condition, or a statement loop, we've been able to uh, fix our program so that it's impossible for the user to enter um, invalid input, and we kind of force them uh, by looping multiple times to enter a correct choice. So that's just a look at uh, the different types of loops and how they could be used. If you liked the video, rate it four or five stars. If you didn't, maybe one or two. Um, if you have a question or are struggling, uh, feel free to leave a comment or send me a message. I'd love to help. Uh, if you want to see more of the videos right when they come out, go ahead and subscribe. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.